In this video, we're going to solve a problem involving acceleration in two dimensions. Here's the problem we're going to solve. Now, I'm going to read through this question, and as I read it, I'm going to underline the given information in green and what the question's actually asking for in red. I like to do this because it'll help keep me organized when I'm solving the problem. Okay, so the problem says you are driving north with your cruise control set at 123 kilometers per hour. So I'm going to underline the direction and that velocity, that speed there, and enter a curve in the highway. After 6.34 seconds, so the time, you exit the curve traveling east. I'm going to underline that as well. And it says, what is your acceleration as you drive around this curve? Now that I've read the problem, I like to write down an equation that I would use to solve this problem. I'm going to be solving for acceleration. And I know that acceleration is equal to the change in velocity over time. Now when I say delta v there, I mean the change in velocity. So it's really v final minus v initial over time. Now that I have these variables listed, I can start looking back to the question and see if I have all the information I need. I'm going to need the final velocity, the initial velocity, the time, and I'm going to be solving for the acceleration. So there's what I'm going to be working with. Let's see what I have. I know the initial velocity, 123 kilometers per hour, in a direction of north, so I'm going to list that. I also know the final velocity is going to be 123 kilometers per hour because cruise control is set. And this time we're going to have a direction in the east. And finally, I know the time is 6.34 seconds. Now what I should do next is make sure all of these numbers are in SI or standard units. Kilometers per hour is not the standard units. I want to have that in meters per second. And one of the reasons I want to do this is because then it's going to match the unit I have for time. So I'm going to go ahead and convert those. Okay, and there are the velocities here in SI units. And I kept the direction along with them. Now, unfortunately, this problem is not just as simple as taking these numbers and plugging them into the equation and solving for the acceleration. The reason I can't just do that is because this uh, velocity is in the east and this velocity is in the north. So I'm going to have to basically work with vectors here. I'm going to have to draw a picture so I can kind of see what's going on. So I'm going to draw these two vectors right here, these ones, just so I can see what they look like. And this is going to help me a lot as I try to solve this problem. Okay, so this first one here is my V initial. And the second one here is my V final. They're both the same size. They're so same length arrow pretty well. And uh, I have the initial pointing in the north and then the final pointing in the east. Now what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to subtract these vectors from each other. So I have my final velocity. I want to subtract from that my initial velocity. So here's how we do this. I'm going to take that final velocity vector and draw that in here. And I'm going to subtract from that the initial velocity. And when we do that, all we do is we add the negative version of this. And so what I want to do is I want to flip this vector. So now it's facing downwards. And then I'm going to take the tail of that second vector. I'm going to stick it onto the tip of the arrow of the first vector that I had here. So this is my final velocity. I'm going to subtract from that the initial velocity. So I'm going to draw that in. And then I'm going to connect the tail to the tip just like that. And then this right here is delta V, that new vector that I just drew in to make the triangle. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for the magnitude of this side of the triangle here. In other words, this hypotenuse because I made a right angle triangle. Now I know each side is going to be 34.2 meters per second. And so I could just use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for that unknown side. So let's go ahead and do that. So here's the Pythagorean theorem that we know. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. And I've just subbed in the variables that we're working with. And I'll solve for delta V, the hypotenuse, and I'll end up with 34.2 squared plus 34.2 squared, and then I'll take the square root of that because I needed to get rid of that squared right there. 
we end up with 48.4 meters per second. I really should have kept the units here of meters per second as I was writing in that information. Okay, now that we know delta V, I can take delta V and this value, and I could plug it back up here into the equation. And so let's go ahead and do that. And we end up with 48.4 meters per second divided by the time, which was 6.34 seconds. We end up with an acceleration of 7.63 meters per second squared. Since acceleration is always a vector, though, we still have to have a direction. Now, there's different ways I could state this direction. Since the problem was originally talking about north and east, I could state it in terms of, you know, compass directions like that. So if I look at this way the arrow is pointing here, if this is east going this way and up is north and down is south, I could say that the direction is southeast. And I could just write right after this, southeast after the number here. I could just do this. So that's one option. Another option is that we can actually find the angle right here. Now I could calculate the angle using the tangent of the angle, which would be equal to the opposite side right over here, uh, divided by the adjacent side. But since they're the same, I know what it's going to be. The angle is going to be equal to a 45 degree angle. You could do the math if you want, uh, but that's what it's going to be anytime we have the same length size on a uh, right angle triangle. We're going to end up with a 45 degree angle right here. So since that's 45, and then what we want to do is look at this triangle here as if it's in an xy axis. And here's our zero right along this line. Right here is 90. And then we have 180, and then we have 270, all the way back around here to 360. It's just a complete circle as we move around. So I know each one of these boxes represents 90 degrees. So what we want to do is we want to base it off of zero and go all the way around like this, right there, to that angle. So really what I'm doing is I'm going to take 90 plus... 90 plus 90, because it went through all those coordinates. And then I'm going to add to that 45 right in here. And so we'd end up with an angle of this, this entire thing right here of 315 degrees. And so I could also say up here at 315 degrees. So it kind of depends on who your teacher is and what they expect you to say in the answer, but we could say it's in direction of southeast or 315 degrees. And that is acceleration in two dimensions.